So what I do to start is I take my piece of fabric and I fold it so that about 16 inches of it is doubled over. So there's my 16 inch mark. And I'm going to sandwich this batting in between that 16 inches. This is just a couple of pieces of batting that I had that were scrap and I sewed them together. Once you get them sandwiched like that, you're going to stitch around the outside of this sandwich all the way, close to the edge, to contain the batting. And you're going to draw on your fabric around your cookie cutters, on the outside of the cookie cutters to make shapes that you can follow with stitch lines. So let me draw a few of these out and then I'll show you how to stitch it all together. So I've drawn out a dozen cookies and now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to stitch them inside the line and outside the line. The line is where we'll be cutting them out. I'm going to start on the heart, um, on the bottom point of each heart. Take a couple back tacks and I'm going to stitch right to the inside of that line by about an eighth of an inch. And I'm using thread that sort of matches the fabric. I get to the point inside the heart and I put my needle in and I pivot. This stitching line is going to hold the cookie together. After it's cut out. Now I'm going to jump the line and on the outside of the line I'm going to do the same thing. By about an eighth of an inch. This is going to hold the rest of the cookie dough together after the cookies have been taken out. So you end up with stitching on both sides of the line and then you're going to cut out in between the two stitching lines. You're going to cut out the shape of the cookie. So let me finish the rest of these and I'll show you what we do. So I've got them all sewn now and it's time to cut them out. You want to maintain the shape of the cookie, so cut carefully between the lines of stitching. If you don't have a sharp enough pair of scissors to start your little point, I like to use a seam ripper and I just put it in between my two lines of stitching and out again and make a little cut and then I can get the tip of my big scissors in there to do my cutting. So just carefully cut out the shape of that cookie on the line that you drew with your pencil. And there we have one cookie shape and one cookie. And you can see when the child plays with it, it can go back into the design right side up or upside down, it doesn't really matter. Teaches them a little bit about puzzles. Then they can come along with their cookie cutter and pretend to cut the cookie out. And pop it off, put it onto a pretend pan and stick it in their oven. So now let's decorate these cookies. We're going to do some couching. We're going to take up the piece of yarn and we're going to zigzag stitch over the yarn around the edge of the cookie in a matching thread to the yarn. And when it's all done, it'll look like a gingerbread cookie that's been frosted. So let me do a couple of those and I'll show you what they look like. To put the yarn on the cookie as a decoration, I always start on a straight edge and I place the yarn way over the edge so that I can pull it nice and taut from behind. I get it right on the edge of the cookie and I do a zigzag stitch 
over it to get it started. And every time I get to a point, I put my needle in and I pivot. Put my needle in and I pivot. And that's how I make my way around the cookie. Back to the beginning, I just go over the, the start of the yarn and I back tack. And when I'm all done, I can just trim off the extra yarn. And there's my decorated cookie. Here's a heart. It has a nice point and a straight edge to start with too, so I just put the yarn across the edge, way off the edge. And I'm going to use a coordinating thread. To finish off the edges of your cookie project, you can just zigzag stitch around the edge, or you could put binding on the edge if you want. I'm just going to zigzag stitch it. Just trim close to the zigzag stitches when you're done, and it shouldn't ravel or fray anymore. If you have a serger, you can serge the edges, or like I said, you could bind them. Now the end of the fabric that doesn't have any batting on it is what you're going to roll the cookie dough into to secure it and hold all the pieces so they don't get lost. I'm just going to fold that over nicely and top stitch a nice seam on there to give it a clean edge. The final step to this cookie project is to make it so you can roll it up and secure it. And I have Velcro here that I'm going to attach to my, my dough. So, on the end that I fold it over, I'm going to sew the loopy side of the Velcro just around all four sides. And then on the other side, along that seam, on the plain side of the seam, not the cookie side of the seam, I'm going to sew the other softer side of the Velcro. And then it'll roll up nicely. If you don't have an embroidery machine, you could always use a wide zigzag stitch to write something on your project. I just put a little bit of the scrap batting on the back to have something soft and give it some stability. And then I trimmed away the excess batting. So there it is, a fun cookie project. No fancy tools, just a little bit of fabric, some scraps of batting, and some yarn, and 
you're all set. A couple cookie cutters and your kids will be happy for hours. I just fold it up like this and the Velcro should match up nicely. And that's my project.